and welcome to our Planet Coaster Harder Challenge Mode series. Uh, so we are back here and we are working on the entrance. We finish up a little bit with our uh, parking lot and then uh, we go and take a look at working on that guest services, admissions, ticket building. Uh, that oddly shaped one that we uh, created in the last episode. So uh, right now we're just kind of uh, putting on some path covers, kind of giving it a, a little bit different look to hide some of the uh, terrible pathing uh, that is the uh, planet coaster pathing. And uh, I do want to mention uh, I am going to bring up some of the rules that we have for the challenge mode. None of them really apply. To, uh, to this episode, so we're not really going to go over them here uh, uh, because there, there's really no point. But we do play with some rules, uh, uh, and if uh, you, you're kind of interested why, just to make it a little bit more enjoyable for myself, give myself a little bit more of a challenge. So uh, those are the rules that we are playing by, uh, and they have changed over the... Uh, the course of the series so uh, if you go back and start from the beginning you'll notice they are a little bit different but anyway back to what we're working on right now we are putting in a drop off zone for our guests if they were coming in uh, with like an uber or something like that they could just come right over into this area and drop them off and then circle back around and get back out to the road and uh you know, I was really sh uh, trying to figure out how I was going to make this work, and, you know, I, I, I tried a couple different colors here, and it just ended up that, you know, just making it a different gray seemed to do the job. So, uh, that's what we do, that's what we have, and uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it is. Uh, we do have that line down the middle, uh, I'm not thrilled with that, but all of the other lines didn't perfectly line up, so... That's kind of why we have it, uh, and we, why we kept it. I'm not super concerned about it, so we just keep it. Uh, we do use these little lights a lot here, just to uh, signify like little pulls, so people couldn't drive through. Obviously, uh, this was just a light, but most people just run right through it. But uh, we're just going to assume that uh, they're a little bit more sturdy than that. So, and they add a little bit of light. So, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, we do uh, add some covers here uh, on the sidewalk, just so you can kind of see the uh, brick is kind of like our crosswalk, and uh, I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. Uh, again, it's not super, super crazy, but finally we are heading on to uh, the main portion of the video, and it is the guest services ticket building uh, whatever you want to call it uh, and this I struggled with this a lot and you can see I there's several times throughout the video where I didn't know what I wanted to build I couldn't see it uh, and usually most of the builds that I have I have some type of vision I know what I'm trying to get so you can see we're, we're just kind of building here at this point and uh, uh, I'm trying to make something that looks a little bit more interesting, a little bit modern, uh, and you know, it, it all does kind of come together, so we uh, we just keep going, you know, and if something wasn't working, I stop, reconfigure myself, and try something a little bit different, but the uh, Planet Coaster panel pieces and the modern wood uh, texture they tend to work really well together and I really like the way uh, the way it all works and, and how we get it to go and uh, I know I posted uh, on a few different areas on Facebook uh, as well as some of the discords that I uh, participate in uh, and you know, I couldn't really figure out how I wanted this to go, and, you know, I I have this, like, little wavy design thing, and I was like, you know what, this kind of looks like a an M, uh, but then I realized, you know, it's more like a W, because it's uh, upside down, so 
Uh, I also wanted it to be a little bit more open in the middle, so uh, I wasn't super thrilled with the way this was turning out, but you know, I kept going because I was like, you know what, this, this does kind of have potential. So maybe maybe we just need to, uh, to keep going for now uh, and eventually see, maybe we'll come up with something uh, a little bit different, but here's something that I haven't used in a while. Uh, the candy pieces, I think it's coconut or something. I don't know exactly what it is. Looks like bark, so we go ahead and get that down there to kind of fill in that. Uh, that little, like, planter area. We do add a uh, relatively large birch tree, which uh, I actually changed that in the live portion. So uh, it's going to stay there and through the entire time lapse and then... Uh, it's one of the first things we do in the live portion, so you have that to look forward to. We do a lot of uh, staff management in the live portion, so if you're interested in that, uh, you're really going to enjoy this because we really dive into how we're going to manage this area, doing making a work roster, uh, as well as what we do to set up our advertisement destinations and things like that so we got a lot of that to look forward to here but uh, in terms of the time lapse we're just trying to add uh, some different definitions to what this area is going to be and this is not the final piece of how this is going to look uh, so just so you're aware this 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 part we do change uh we do not keep the wavy wm whatever you want to call it uh i do try and make a base for this which uh, actually the base was pretty decent but uh it didn't fit the theme i don't think so uh yeah i think that's kind of more of like a retro look and that was not the type of look that I was going for. Yeah, we completely get rid of that. So uh, we do add these like lights on the side. Uh, they're the sci-fi lights, which they kind of look a little modern. So uh, I like the way they they show up here, and they they don't provide they don't provide any light really. So uh, we <laughs> have to uh, give some simulated light uh, a little bit later, but. That's not until after we change the entire design, so uh, which uh, is coming up here right now. So I decided to go with the panel roofs all the way across here, uh, and the idea is just to have one uh, piece that goes all the way across in the front. Uh, we'll connect to that odd planter thing. Uh, and then, so it kind of like closes off that area, but then they'll leave the op middle area open. So, uh, I think it, it works pretty nice for what we, what we're trying to accomplish here. Uh, gives a little bit of shade for the people coming in to the area, uh, but also stays pretty consistent with the rest of the building, uh, in terms of getting the modern wood for the beams. Uh, and then it's a little bit different from the other side, so pretty happy with uh, the way this ends up turning out. Uh, and it really doesn't start to come together until we start getting the roof on the actual building itself. So uh, I do look to try and add some more trees in here. Uh, we forego that completely. I eventually try and add some benches in this area as well. We forego that because of the uh, nightmare that is pathing underneath but uh it really it honestly doesn't need it it was probably going to congest the area too much anyway so it makes sense to not have it so yeah uh now finally starting to get onto the actual building uh, i was trying to figure out how i was going to uh dress this up a little bit and conveniently there is a commercial uh facade which I was able to just kind of fit onto the front. Uh, and then we add little awnings uh, that we can add a little bit of orange to to keep the color for uh, the mostly average matte colors. So uh, I 
I do like the way that turned out, and then we have to hide some pieces. Uh, and that's the point of these blue bricks, I think it, or bricks, blue beams. Uh, I think it does a good job to kind of cover up the top portion here. Also adds another layer of color, so it makes it a little bit more, gives a little bit more character to the building. Uh, and I'm, again, very happy with the way uh, this turned out. Uh, the left side here, that is going to be the tickets, uh, including that third information kiosk all the way in the left. And then uh, on the right, we are going to have will call kiosks, which I eventually put that in here. Uh, and uh, we do change the door. This is not the final door. Uh, we add something that's a little bit more interesting than that. Uh, but we do add the orange uh, trims all the way around. Uh, which I think looks pretty nice. I'm not 100% sold on how it goes up through the tickets there, but, you know, we might have to change that at some point. But uh, I might just forget about it and just move on <laughs> and go for it. Uh, I did want to keep... I wanted to add a little homage to Planet Coaster. Um, I tend to do this with my parks where I just say, you know what, this is Planet Coaster, and we, I really love the game, so I like to put that in here, uh, which we already have one, so, uh, you know, I figure there's probably going to be three total, uh, three where it actually says Planet Coaster, not just like the, uh, the logo, but we'll see, uh, we definitely add a, a second one here later in the build, but uh, you can see it's already starting to come together here a little bit. We start adding some lights here, uh, and uh, I add a lot of lights to begin with, and then we remove them as we go through the build, and uh, I think it kind of it makes the area kind of pop a little bit. This area would be very well lit. Uh, we do uh, get those underground lights uh, that would be to simulate those lights on the side of the pillars. And it just kind of works for the area, I think. Uh, it might be a little too bright yet, but I'm honestly not too concerned about it. Uh, and then randomly in the middle of all this, I said, you know what would be really good if we took these posters and put them down and that would be like, they, they would signify the rows of the parking lot. So we go ahead and do that. Uh, it did not work quite the way I anticipated. Uh, so once we get them all in there, we move them all in and uh, elevate them a little bit. So uh, they have that. And then, yeah, I don't know what made, randomly made me think of that, but uh, I really like those posters. Uh, I think they're, a really cool piece of the game. Uh, I wish we had a few more of them to have a little bit more variety. Uh, maybe one for each character, but you know what? I'm happy with the ones that we have. I, I really like them. So we're going to use them. We use them a few times in this build as like filler pieces uh, for walls that aren't easy to have something placed on them. So uh, yeah, I really, really like the way it goes. Uh, here we go, starting to add the Will Call Kiosk, and I don't know what was up with the, the font, or if it was just the lighting that was weird here, but, uh, it definitely did not like the way it was oriented here, but, uh, I wanted to keep the same font, so we do. And then, uh, we go ahead and overpopulate with lights. And uh, go ahead and get a little bit more in terms of our trim going. And uh, yeah, we are now, yeah, so there we go. Add another poster. Of course we do. Planet Coaster. How do you not? Uh, and we. this is our homage to Planet Coaster on the front. Uh, I think it kind of fits in that area because there's not really much else that you can do. So we got that going. Uh, that wall... Uh, that we just placed there, the panel pieces. I did not know what to do with that, so uh, I think we actually used two more posters on that at some point, but 
here in the inside of the park now, we are adding a the guest service side of the building. So uh, they're just going to be information kiosks. Uh, unfortunately, there is no guest services. It's just information. You don't have to buy tickets. You have to. Which I honestly, I think that would be pretty cool if you had to, if guests had to go purchase a ticket at a ticket window before they could enter the park. Uh, I think that would be uh, something that'd be a little. That would be pretty cool, or if it was a true free-to-enter park, they could just walk right in, uh, which I think that, think that would make a lot of sense to, to have something like that, but, uh, you know, maybe we'll get that in the Planet Coaster 2 uh, every now and then. That seems to pick up steam, which it did recently again, so uh, I am thankful for that. I really want to see a Planet Coaster 2, but uh, maybe that's a video for another day, so... We go ahead, we get our ATM in here. I was really struggling how what to put behind this. Uh, I was actually going to put the octopus there behind it on its side. Uh, because honestly, it didn't look all that bad on its side. So uh, I was going to do that, but then again, I was like, eh, you know, it doesn't really fit there. Uh, we do get another door on the out, or I guess the inside of the park here. Uh, and then we just randomly decide to add a beam up there because it adds... Uh, a little bit more uh, character and definition. Now this part, I was struggling to figure out how I wanted to have some type of shade here for people that were standing talking to guest services. And I just recently downloaded a bunch of things from Hydro off the workshop. And I don't even know if these are actually from Hydro. I think they are, but uh, these canopies, I, and I was just like, no, I don't think, I don't think it fits right. So. We go back to our panel pieces, uh, try and make like a little interesting design here. And, you know, I think it kind of fit pretty well for, for what we have here. And, uh, you know, I kind of, I really go all over the place during this, uh, this portion because there was, I did not want to do the trim on the outside of the, uh, the panel piece because I knew I had to do it or it wasn't going to look right, so I really just did not want to do it whatsoever. Uh, we go ahead and we take a look at putting uh, an advertisement billboard behind there. Didn't think that looked right. Uh, and for whatever reason, when I was editing this building, I kept deleting the whole building and bringing it back, and every time I did that, I had to close the shops. <laughs> every single time. And I did it two or three times, and it was really annoying. Uh, so there was one. Uh, and uh, close it and then uh, try and get stuff back in here. We use a poster to fill in there, which uh, looks fine. I feel like I added or changed the color. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. But uh, we go ahead and add, cover up a little bit of the uh, area around there. Uh, get some more of the, uh, the lights on the pillars because uh, it just, it's something that would be needed, something just to kind of fill the area. We get some of the orange on the uh, panel pillars all the way around. And yeah, we are starting to take uh, shape finally here. Uh, and now for the piece that I was trying to put off this entire time, the border on the top. So. We go ahead and do it. Didn't like those pieces. Get rid of those and move on to the next. And uh, yeah, uh, once we get it all settled out, we go ahead and piece them in here. Uh, we do tidy it up a little bit, uh, but nothing too crazy going on uh, all the way through here. We add another panel piece in the middle. Uh, and then we have to, of course, add our guest services sign once uh, once we get all that taken care of. So, yeah, I think we're pretty... Yeah, now we're moving to guest services. Uh, and then uh, the next challenge that we're going to have to face is... How are we going to make the roof? 
What, how are we going to make this look interesting? Uh, obviously, it doesn't need to be perfect from the sky because if you're a guest, you're not going to see the roof. But, you know, we want it to be somewhat realistic. So, uh, how are we going to do that from, uh, from our perspective? And this is a really oddly shaped building, so it's going to have a weird shaped roof. Uh, the standard pieces aren't going to work right, so uh, we go to our trusty old uh, wooden beams to add some more trim, and then the panel pieces, or uh, not panel, the flat scenery pieces, uh, what are they called? The... I can't cannot remember what it's called. The art shapes. Those things. Uh, to kind of fill in everything else. So once we uh, kind of figure out, you know, we're going to need to uh, remove some of these lights, add a little bit of uh, the panel columns. Uh, oh, randomly add in a feature or a uh, poster there. And then we can go and add our art shape roof. Uh, and as I was doing this, I was like, you know what? This doesn't look right. Obviously, it's brown. Uh, I thought it was black initially. Uh, and as I turned around, it, it's definitely not black. So it's like this This doesn't quite look right. So let's go ahead and let's add another one. Lower it down a little bit. Change the color to black. Um, because black will look better. Uh, and then let's go ahead and finish and add our, bring a, a few of the panel columns up and just kind of add a trim to just kind of close in that roof area. Uh, since this is a flat roof, uh, when it rains, we'd want to hold things up there and then there would be some type of drainage system up there to, to prevent it from going off onto just everywhere in the building so uh, we get that in and uh, go ahead and add some air conditioning unit, add some vents above the plate Atlantic coaster homage uh, get some windows on the other side with a little bit of planter uh, lattice work there and you know this building this building came together eventually uh, everything that we uh, need to get done. I think it looks pretty nice. Uh, we do have to uh, address what's going to go over and how where we're going to move Wild Blue to. Um, oh, and by the way, the two pieces, uh, the, the barriers in front of the two guest service windows, those, uh, we event, we removed those off camera because, uh, and this was after the live portion, because uh, the vendors would get out and be stuck and be spawned back to the front. So we don't want that. So we just remove them. We'll let them walk through it. It's no big deal. So anyway, we are coming up to the end of the time lapse portion. So uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, but we have a lot to go over in the live portion. Uh, and like I said, a lot of it is focused on staff and the work rosters so uh, I'm gonna let this finish up and I will see you in the live portion welcome to the live portion of today's video on uh, our time-lapse uh, we didn't cover a whole lot we just worked on the guest services and admission tickets building uh, which is all the same thing a uh, little plaza area here so yeah i mean there's not gonna be a lot to go over here in the recap but let's go ahead and take a look we have this one random tree in here just to kind of give it a little bit of, whoa a little bit of greenery uh, so we got our drop off zone here uh, and i had a few different variations of this one that had like this little wavy thing here but i thought it just kind of took up too much of the area and i didn't want to do all that much. Um, I might actually switch this tree to be something a little bit smaller 
Actually, you know what? Let's just go ahead and do that. Because uh, the, the tall birch tree is just a bit much. Um, so let's go ahead and get in here. Where's the small birch tree? There we go. That and delete that. Yeah, so uh, I think that kind of fits the area a little bit better here. So, um, yeah, I think that I think that makes a little bit more sense. I did want to put some uh, uh, benches here, but uh, due to the pathing, that was not working out too great. Uh, I was going to put benches in here. That also did not work out great. Um, but overall, I'm pretty pleased with the way this turned out. This would be something that I could see uh, for people uh, coming up here to, to get their tickets and whatnot. And uh, there, in total, there's five information kiosks, which is going to cost us a lot of money. Uh, but you do have your tickets, you have your will call kiosks, or will call, whatever you want to call them. Uh, of course, we did a little homage to Planet Coaster on the outside here, uh, just to kind of fill some space. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, it's just a nice little building here. Uh, on this side, the, we have the guest services. Um, and, I mean, these two admissions and, like, tickets would be near or in the same building as guest services. So, uh, we have that type of setup here. Uh, all of their management would be in the back and do what it is. It is a weird-shaped building, but... Nah, it fits. It's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, we do have the ATM on the side. We have a couple different entryways for staff, which is not functional. But that is fine as well. Um, and then we started to go into our Wild Blue area. So uh, we're getting close to the point where we're going to need to move Mr. Wild Blue. Um, but yeah, th this building was very slow. Uh, in how it came together. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Uh, I obviously wanted to keep the mostly average matte colors in here because it is the entrance building, so it is the Matford Park. Uh, so, yeah, I wanted to try and keep the colors in here as much, but orange is obviously a little bit difficult to get in here. And then, again, I do promise it is not going... The, the mostly average matte, the blue, orange, and white are not going to be throughout the entire park. I promise you that. So, uh, yeah, it's, we're, we're looking pretty good here. Uh, I'm pretty satisfied with the way this came out. Uh, we obviously will have to figure out what we're going to do with this area. Uh, and then, uh, I do want to work on this area in the next episode, but, uh, we'll get to that when we get to it. Um, but, uh, for this episode, we do have uh, some management features that I really want to take a look at. Uh, and that's because we're going to work on these uh, information kiosks. But we'll get to that here in a little bit. Uh, but let's go ahead and pull up our management. You can see I have a, I'm making a ton of money. Uh, we are probably going to start to uh, bottom out here once we start opening up some of these information kiosks. The most popular attraction is the parking tram. That's crazy because it literally just goes nowhere and people are just walking all the way down here which is kind of cool but you know we might have to give them a reason to be down here maybe we'll put like a hotel in here i know i mentioned that in the last episode so we'll take a look at that uh, uh coming up here but we've got a little bit before we do that uh all of our thoughts guest thoughts are looking pretty good this park is great scissors really good value good value uh parking tram yes uh, it is great. Uh, happiness, staff happiness is 100%. Guest happiness is 100%. I don't know if I've ever seen that. Um, that's pretty, that's pretty amazing. Uh, I don't think I've ever accomplished a perfect 100%. I've had 98, 99, but wow. All right. Staff, I, I definitely have. So most profitable ride is the Steel Eagle. Uh, our only coaster in the park at the moment. Uh, that's to be expected. The Steel Eagle Gift Shop, which is selling, I believe... What are we selling at the Steel Eagle Gift Shop? 
Is that Looney Bloons? Yes, balloons. So, balloons have always been successful for me, so... At least in this game. Uh, our monthly profit, we're looking at $2,000. That's awesome. Monthly construction costs, that'll go down and away. Uh, monthly wages. Wow. Uh, and then we don't have any loans, no marketing, nothing like that. Uh, and this, this amazes me. Whoa, I didn't know I could click on that. Yeah, that uh, amazes me. So, uh, don't we need to worry about graph. What the heck happened here? Our park rating plummeted somewhere in the middle there. Oh, you know what? I think I closed the park. Uh, that was probably when I was working on the, uh, the entrance. So, uh, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, park rating breakdown. Our rides are great. Our scenery is better. Park balance bonus at 104. That's great. Marketing bonus. We don't have any of that. Bonus from guest happiness, 25%. Jesus. Park rating is 1811. Uh, wow. Uh, our miscellaneous stats, biggest drop, 88 feet. And yeah, we only have one coaster, so. Uh, and that's a lot of vomit. Number of months since park opened, 500. Wow. Uh, I just let the game play, and that's where we've it's taken us. So, anyway, enough of looking at that random stuff. Uh, our rides and tickets, <laughs> that's where we're making most of our money. Uh, I mean, you can see, we'll look at June uh, and let, until this switches over, which might be soon. Uh, but $4,000, $5,000 on some of them. Uh, and this is actually probably a low month. Uh... I mean, we're making good money. We're basically... Oh, no. Okay, so the rides typically make a little bit more than the coasters, which is to be expected. Uh, I just heard... Securities. Ah, security caught someone. Nice. Uh, I heard that. And <laughs> I had to find it. Uh, our coaster ticket sales are very good. Uh, for one coaster. Our small attractions, uh, that's awesome that it's making money. Uh, ride running costs, uh, to be expected. Coaster running, that's to be expected as well. Uh, and everything else is pretty good for what we see. Uh, shops and facilities. Uh, we are making money. Uh, sometimes we are not making money, but that's okay. Uh, that is also to be expected we probably lost some money because i had uh, the information kiosks open at one point so that's to be expected uh and it costs a lot to operate all of that stuff so great uh park management yes staff wages a lot scenery running costs a lot i don't know why the scenery running costs are so high but whatever uh, nothing else there. Construction, not concerned about it. Other cash flow, not concerned about it. Uh, and we are looking good. Our graphs, wow. Things have tapered down a little bit. But that's This is about the time that I refurbished everything, so that's to be expected. Uh, loan history. That didn't, that didn't last very long. Research, nothing in research, nothing in marketing yet. And our staff. So let's take a look. Let's go down the list. Uh, we got Daniel Pospichal and K Dancer. Uh, they're doing great as always. Uh, and if you want to be a part of the park, let me know who you want to be, which character, which staff member you want to be. And I'll go ahead and hire you in here uh, and get you into the park. I tend to talk about each person uh, throughout the episode. Uh, or at least mention it briefly. Uh, and then uh, you can pick one color. I can't guarantee I can get it in, but I'll try as best I can. I do want to try and keep the park looking somewhat consistent throughout. So uh, there is that. But yeah, Daniel Pospichal and Kate Answer, uh, they are roaming about doing a great job. We don't need to train them up. They got the normal workload, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, our janitors, we got Julian Bush. Dorsey Booker and Erasmo Dukes. Uh, they are looking pretty good. They are a little tired at the moment, but uh, to be honest, pretty good uh, in terms of what we have going on there. Our vendors, 
Uh, we do have Rust. <laughs> I forgot about Rusty Gooch. Uh, we got a couple people here. That are oh, okay. So this area, yeah. Uh, but I don't think I want to. Yeah, I don't think I want to jump the gun yet. Uh, we'll see. That might drop down here, so uh, we'll see if that gets any better. We're going to have to hire some more people, too, so... Uh, and the main entrance is going to get some more people, so... Um, our mechanics... Uh, ooh! High workloads for the mechanics. Uh, but we still burl on uh, normal, so I'm not going to jump the gun and train up anyone else. I don't want to... If I just keep training up, I'll eventually start paying a lot of money on that. Now, uh, one place I do want to uh, train people up is security, and that's because security is insane in this game. So, uh, Nocturo 1, you're going to be getting trained here shortly. Uh, and in our work rosters, uh, we need to make a minor change here, I believe. Or maybe not. Uh, the main entrance is... Looking good there. Our staff building. Uh, I think those are pretty good too. We got security office and whatnot. So that is all good. Now, um, I did want to take a look here at getting some of our will call and whatnot open. So Sure. We can open this one, information 13, uh, and then I believe we'll get a will call open. We'll eventually open all these, but uh, to start, I do not want to go crazy here. Yeah, so got the main guest service window open. So now, um, what we're going to have to do is hire... Some vendors to work here. Two, three, four. So there we go. Uh, and we get four because they, uh, we have three shops open, so that we'll have one person to go through and give the breaks and whatnot. Now, uh, we are going to create a new work roster here. We're going to call this. Can I just not select? Okay, well. Hmm. How can I do this? So here's what I'm going to do we're going to go in here, select the building. We're going to go to the bear paw eats thing. Or, oh, you know what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to edit the building. Split this from the building. Okay, so uh, the reason we do that is because in our main entrance now, uh, we're going to get rid of our guest service building. Uh, and we are going to make sure that we have our uh, security office selected here. Actually, no, we can... Can we keep that? No. No, we can't keep that because then some of the shop workers here could end up over here and we don't want that. So... Okay, so we saved that, and we're going to create a new one. We're going to call this the Guest Services. That's fine. Uh, and we'll get that, and then what we need is just to select the staff building, because they're going to need to use that staff building. So, there we go. So now we got Guest Services. Uh, and we're going to have to go in here. Alright, we got our new staff. 
So let's just give them all a nice little pay increase to start. That's beautiful. Uh, and we'll select this guy. We'll get blue. We'll get orange. And then white and white. So these guys are going to have the same color scheme here. So we got Marion Ridgard. Uh, blue, orange, white. White. Nor Sandoval. Blue, orange, white, and white. Russell Darling. And we get these in here. And then Gianna Boyce. We will get Gianna set up. Where did Gianna go? Oh. Oh, you are you are not supposed to be there, but whatever. Um alright, so then we get back into our staff here. So these guys, we need guest services, guest services, guest services, guest services. There we go. And what we're actually going to do is, I expect these people to all be very bored. So we're going to pay them pretty much the max, uh, and we're not going to train them up very much. So um, people will probably start to get upset, but that's fine. I'm not that concerned about it. Um... Alright, so we got that. Now, the other thing that we have to do is, uh, we need to, which one is this? Guest services, mid. Uh, maybe it should be left mid. Left mid, so it's on, uh, let's do tickets. Mid. Okay. Now, we need to set the advertisement for these. So we obviously need that. And we need that. So these are the two rides that have uh, priority pass. So uh, we're going to need that. Okay. So there was that. All right, let's move on to the, okay, we're going to do done then. Uh, we'll do this one, which will be ticket right. Now, even though this isn't open, we're still going to, we're going to get it prepared for when it does open. So, confirm that, done. Perfect. All right. And the last one, we need to change this to ticket left. We'll set the destination. Make sure we get both of these and set that out. So there we go. All right. Now we got to worry about this. So we got will call right. Man, I put way too many. <laughs> I'm gonna if I when I open these, like maybe every so many attractions I'll open one or something like that. But ooh, I didn't take that right. Uh, oh, left. Um, maybe every so often I'll open one up uh, and uh, hope that uh, we can keep making money. Because I think at some point we are going to lose money. All right, now we got, where is this one? Guest service rights. It's easier when it was the other way around. I'm gonna have to rotate my camera at all. 
Now the one thing is this will probably push people over to these attractions, which is good. Uh, what's this one? I guess service middle. Uh, which end? Up, which hopefully will make us more money. Uh, the one bad thing is we just don't have enough. We don't have enough uh, priority pass yet. So uh, so until we start getting more priority pass attractions, uh, we're really not going to be making any money on this. We're not, and that's not real. We're not trying to make money at this point. So uh, I think we made em enough money. Let's do ATM. Okay, and that should give us all that information. This ATM has been doing great. Uh, getting 19 to 20 people a, uh, <laughs> a month, which is great. Uh, all right. So, priority pass. Um, priority passes are for suckers. Uh, we knew that was going to be the case. Uh, let's try $2. Uh, we only have two attractions, so $1 per attraction. Uh, and honestly, it's probably not going to save them all that much money, so it really is for suckers. Uh, but that should set it for all of the, uh, all of the, all of the information kiosks over there. Now, this one, the one nice thing is it saves you from walking all of that and this a little extra bit. Uh, you do have to do this little weird thing here, but you know what, to save you a little bit. Uh, crankshaft, you come in, you, you bypass all of this, which is pretty nice. Uh, now, it doesn't look like the line's all that long at the moment, but, you know, it could be. Uh, and that crankshaft has had a history of long, long lines. So uh, we'll see. We'll see if people start to buy it. I mean, uh, we don't have information signs. So uh, we might get people over here. Where is this? Anyone? No? Okay. So yeah, so we'll see how that goes. We'll have to keep an eye on that in our next episode and see how we're doing. Uh, honestly, we'll see. People, I think, are these guys are already going to be starting to get happy. So that's good. Uh, our mechanics, we already said was good. We got all that good. Our guest happiness. So we were at 100%. We'll see if that comes down uh, at all here. But... Uh, a pretty decent split. We could use some more team groups, but that will come as we get more uh, intense attractions. Uh, but at this rate, uh, it the entrance to the park takes so long to develop. Uh, it, we'll get to new attractions, I promise you that. But it's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit. We're gonna be moving some things around, building quite a few. Uh, uh, buildings here over the next few episodes, but we will get there. But our happiness did drop to 98%, that's expected. Uh, energy, 75%. People are staying in the park for about an hour, which is awesome. Uh, and average spend is pretty decent. Family groups do not spend it on the coaster because family kids can't go on the coaster, so that's expected. Uh, but they do spend more money on like the flat ride so like uh the carousel the whirly rig the scissor on um, the scissor has a long line so uh but the average spend 67 dollars uh probably closer to 70 when you bring in the adult groups that are at 78 dollars because they just keep riding the roller coasters which is awesome uh gift shops we only have the one, so that's not that bad. Uh, average food, not bad. Drinks, fine. Uh, ATM withdrawals. 
that's uh, interesting to know. Uh, and there's no surprise that the ATMs are less on the teen group since they spend less time in the park. So, uh, But it is interesting. Well, I guess because they spend more money on the coaster. They spend more money on average, so they have to pull out more money. Okay, that makes sense. I talked myself into that. Uh, we do have a lot of people that are hungry. We have a lot of people that are thirsty. That's fine. Toilet, yes. Uh, that's coming up here. We're going to build one. Uh, nausea, 98%. That's good. Uh, looking good there. Our thoughts on the park. The park is great. Steel Eagle, great value. Steel Eagle, quite quick. Scissor, great. Um... We ha I don't have enough money to go into Steel Eagle. There's literally an ATM right there. Uh, I'm thirsty. I don't have enough money. Uh, gift shop. Looks busy. Try somewhere else. Well, there aren't any, so sorry. Uh, Kid Answer is the best. Daniel Pospichol is the best. Uh, this place is great scenery. This park is very spacious, so that's awesome. Seeing all of that. Uh, our attractions looking pretty, pretty good here. Steel Eagle obviously making the most money. Uh, $5,000 for last month. That's insane. Uh, crankshaft not making as much. Carousel making a good chunk of money. Whirly Rig and Wild Blue. We really need to get them moved out uh, and themed up. So, uh... Oh, that's gonna. They're, that's coming up. Wild Blue is gonna be moving in very soon, I think, and potentially the Whirly Rig too. So well, we'll see how that goes. Steel Eagle, we're about to lose a t chunk of money. Uh, shops. Uh, yeah. So losing money on defending machines, uh, and the will call kiosks. That's oh, they're all unstaffed. That's funny. Did they all quit? Already? What did they do? That's funny. Uh, why are they all instead? Apparently, maybe I'm doing something wrong with that. But uh, facilities, yes, we're going to lose money there. That's expected. Uh, small attraction, we knew that was making money. No hotels, no restaurants, no unconnected facilities or anything like that. Security, pickpocket victims in park. Uh, that is going to get... Uh, hopefully a little bit better. Uh, we have a lot of security costs now because of all of our uh, parking lot cameras. But that's fine. And honestly, I should probably have a camera in here. Even if it's just one. Uh, because, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. So we'll, we might have to do that. But on uh, our special effects, they are looking fine. Uh, you know what, let's go ahead and uh, plop in a quick security camera. Now, we need a line to surface. So, this is probably the best location for it. Because you can see all this. Obviously, it's behind everyone, but they're going to have to walk away at some point. If they walk that way, well... This camera, there's no camera over here. This camera will hopefully see it. If not, this camera will. Um, if they walk this way, then that camera will obviously see it. If they get under here before they can, well, they got away. Uh, so <laughs> the other thing is they'd probably have cameras in the shops themselves, which we're not going to do because that would be extremely expensive. So let's go ahead and just kind of eyeball this. Throw that in there so that will uh, catch that. I think it doesn't really impact all that much. So, yeah, I think we are looking good. Uh, why has everything been empty for a while? Did this person... Where, did they literally all quit? Like, what's going on here? Uh, let's see. Can we find that? Oh, there's Mr. Security Man. Uh, Alright, so we got one person walking back. That person's in there all happy and excited. I assume we're going to see 
Let's see. It is quite the journey for them to get all the way over here, but at the same time, like, they're, they're not doing anything, so it doesn't really matter. And the guest services is the one that we'd really rather have. What if we took our will car right, close that down? We don't necessarily need will call right, or will. You don't necessarily need will call. And let's go and get two guest services open. That way, there's two closer here, and hopefully, this one won't be uh, left as unoccupied. Ooh, I wonder if I didn't get both buildings here in the work roster. Two facility. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get. Okay. There we go. It's good we saw that. So. <laughs> Uh, now our two people, let's see, coming in here, walking right through that, that's great. Alright, so these are both open, that's perfectly fine. Uh, we don't know where... Waiting to serve, heading to shop, alright, this person's... Where? Why? Why is she all the way over here? Ooh. Russell, darling, uh, please, please stay over here. Are you, you're heading to that shop, correct? There we go. All right. That's perfect. All right, now we're... Norris, where are you at? Norris, you just want to... Uh, you want to kind of come back to us here? Let's... <laughs> something seems weird that they're all the way over there. They're on a specific work roster. Alright, so we got that. We don't have anything over there, so... Shops and facilities. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Okay. Alright. Uh I should not have that over there, so that's good. Alright, yeah. So I think that is going to do it for this episode. Uh we have a uh, very tiny park. Uh, Matt for Park here, so uh, hopefully we'll be moving quite along with this uh, and not have uh, too many issues, be able to get through some things pretty quickly here. But nonetheless, I'm so happy that you uh, ended up watching it here with me. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like. If you saw something I could have done better, let me know in the comment section. And if you want to see some more awesome Planet Coaster content, please subscribe to the channel. So again, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Later!